Hey gamers, it's time to get a little high class and review the game Masterpiece. Let's check it out. Setup for the game is pretty easy. What you're going to do is you're going to pick one of these colored pawns and you're going to place them anywhere on the board that you want. Players will roll the six-sided die to see who goes first and they will each get $15 million in money over there. As you see, we have 10 million, 5 million, 1 million, and 500,000 denominations. The game will tell you how they should uh, break that up into that 15 million when they first start to go. Before they start though, they will definitely need one of these little cards that will tell them how many of each value card is in the deck. Value cards are what we're going to be associating these paintings with. There's a stack of just beautiful, beautiful paintings in the game that you, players will be bidding on. And each of these paintings, whenever they're sold, you will randomly give them a uh, value card to them. So if you see, there's different values ranging from everything to even forgeries. I don't see any forgeries in here, but there's two in every deck. But uh, anyway, uh, you will put the value of that underneath or just on top of the card. Only you will get to look at that at any time. Play and players who buy this painting will get to look at it too. Uh, if it is a forgery, it is worth zero no matter how much money you have on it. Uh, but I'll talk about that later on. So what you're going to be doing, you're going to be rolling the die and moving around the board clockwise here and following any one of the actions that are available. For instance, if you land on bank auction, well that's simple. The game has this little, this beautiful little easel here. And what you'll do, you'll place the uh, painting on the easel and say, okay, this one's up for grabs. Starting with the player who landed there, they're going to place their, you know, their bid. And they say, I bid one million. Next player says, I bid two, three. Then the auction goes around when someone is, has the highest bid. Whoever that has the highest bid, they win the painting. The auction is over. They will grab a random value card and look at it. Ah, this painting is worth three million. They're not going to show anyone else that. They're just going to put it, attach it to the card like this. And they're going to say, okay, that's it. And then they're going to move on. Now, if you have a private auction, what that means is you could actually try to uh, put one of the other players paintings up for sale. So let's say that this was the yellow, yellow player's painting, but red landed there and they wanted to put this one up for grabs. So it's going to go back up here on the easel and then players are going to bid for it. Now, no one knows the actual cost of it un uh, except for the player who owns it. And so once the player has, whoever has bought this, if they want to, they don't have to put, you know, if they don't want to put anyone else's painting up for sale, they don't have to. But if they want to, they will get it and then they can look and see, did I overpay for this or not? And that money at the private auction would go to the person whose painting was up for grabs. So in this case, yellow would get whatever money was bid on their own painting. Uh, other things that you can do, other squares you can look at, there's things that say, hey, collect $3 million dollars or you can get a value card. This is a way, this is the space right here, here. This is a way where you can get uh, money in the game because money do, does get tight in the game. So if you land here, you can get $3 million. Or if you have plenty of money, you can get an additional value card like this and add it on to any one painting you want. And so if I add it onto this, this, car, this painting went from three now to seven million dollars. But you want to watch it because when players see that you have two cards on here, they may think, ooh, this one's worth a lot more. And if they land on that private auction, they may try to bid for this and try to get it away from you. However, if you pull a forgery at any time, that means no matter how much money was on this card beforehand, it's a forgery, it's a fake, a fake's a fake, it's worth nothing. Now, you don't have to tell players that. In fact, this first card I had maybe was a forgery. And when I landed there, I bought another value card just to see if I could fake someone out. I really have a forgery here, and any other value cards associated with it really just blank it out. So that's some of the strategy that you can have in the game. Other things you can do, there are other uh, spaces here that says you can buy a painting from the bank for X amount of money. It'll tell you how much you can buy it for, and if you just pay the amount, what you'll do is you'll get the next you know, painting off of the stack, and you'll buy it that way. Now, other things you can do, it says you can sell. Some of them say you may sell a painting back to the bank, and if you want to, you can sell them a painting back to the bank uh, for whatever the price is on it. Others say you must 
sell one. You know, it says sell a painting back to the bank for th th three and a half million. That means there's no maybe. You have to do it. So if I landed here, I'd have to sell them one. It doesn't matter what the value is, too. So I hopefully can get my money's worth. Maybe sell them one that's only worth two million for three and a half. Heck, I could even sell them the forgery for three and a half. And that's how you can get that forgery off your hands if you land on that space. So there's two different ways. One's a you may sell one back to the bank if you want to for whatever the value card is or whatever it says here, like four, uh, three million dollars. I may. Oh, that's buy one. I can buy one, of course, from the bank, but of course there's others here that say, oh, there it is, may sell any painting back to the bank. And that's the one I would turn in and turn in my value card and get that money back. Another way to get money in the game, again, money super tight in the game. But when this one says sell a painting back to the bank, you have to do it. There are other ones that say, hey, inherit a painting. You know, and if you an inherent one, basically you're going to take the top card from this uh, top uh, card here from the painting deck and the top card from the value deck, and you're going to get that painting for free. The game ends when this deck is totally run out of paintings, and then the players add up all their money. Whoever has the most value wins the game. Final thoughts. What do I think about the game? Uh, you know what? Uh, I have the 90s version of this. I saw that Norm from the Board Game Museum has the, uh, I think it's the 80s version of this, and his are different. The thing I like about his, I think the pictures are the same, but I do like on the older version they have a little clip that can keep that value card and the painting together. And the value cards are a lot bigger too. They're about the size of the painting, so they can flip you know, face face down so you can't see the price. You have to flip it up to see what the price is. I like that. I wish this one had clips. This one doesn't. This one's from the 90s. Uh, but what this one does have is that little plastic easel. It's not that big of a deal, but it is nice to say, here is the painting up for bid. I'm going to be honest, this is a great game. Uh, if you have kids, and, and this is a good art uh, teacher too, uh, their, my nephew's, uh, their mom is a art teacher and she saw us playing the game when I was playing it with them. We were having a great time and her kids knew some of the artists. They knew, they recognized some of the paintings because they were in her class. And they told their mom, their mom came by and checked out the game saying, this is great. You need to bring this to my school kids. Now it was at the end of the year, so we didn't have time to do it. But, uh, coming up this next year, I am going to go by the school and we're going to play masterpiece with the kids because she thinks it's a great way for them to learn the paintings because it does give you all the information on the card of who painted it and when and what the name of the painting was. So it is also in disguise an educational game in fact. But folks I don't care if it's educational or not. This is a fun friggin game. It is still fun. I, I am ashamed that I spent Oh gosh, how many times at flea markets passing this game by? This game, you can find it at several flea markets here and there. It's like for five bucks or something. I was like, I don't want that. It looks boring. I must have passed like three or four copies in my lifetime and never once I think about getting it. And then finally I said, ah, you know what? I should try this out. And I did a great, great game. I really do love Masterpiece. So it's a great game. I do recommend it. It's cheap to get online. Folks, that is all the time I have for now. Until next time, gamers, game on.